So for this one, I'm going to do a game that I, you know, really wanted to like and, and spent a good sort of, um, I don't know, I think like an hour-ish on it, an hour and a half on it. Um, it's the Blair Witch. It's Bloober Team's new Blair Witch game that came out, I think it came out last year. And I remember Ash telling me that it was, that it was brilliant when it first came out and she's a big fan of the movie and everything. Um, but when I went into the game, and it's set up so well, you play as this dude, I think he's called like Ethan or something, I forget his name. He's some dude um, that's investigating a missing child in the middle of the forest, but obviously it's the forest from the movie so that, you know, once the police team have already gone in and he finds all the different police cars outside and he's like, look, I'm gonna join the search um, to find, try and find this kid. And it's like, oh, is the, you know, is, is history repeating? Because obviously it's set after the Blair Witch movie and has something happened to the child that invokes the, the spirit, whatever the hell the thing was from the Blair Witch. And um, they play around quite a lot, uh, Blue Team, the devs, play around quite a lot with the idea that your dude's psychology or, um, you know, general sort of state of mind is very much in flux. Like, you know, your sort of characters will talk to you over the intercom, different police officers that you've known will tell you like, oh, you know, are you actually suitable for this? Because, you know, do you remember last time? Remember what happened last time? Um, you know, and you're sort of up against these different um, hallucinations and uh, blackouts that your guy suffers and things like that. And it really feels like it's going somewhere. And I, I know I'm very much assured that it gets there. Um, but there's one mission, I think it's the fourth mission in, um, after you find this big tree, um, <laughs> this big tree full of like oily tendrils and stuff. And your dude doesn't say anything. And I was like, well, I, I kind of wanted him to remark on that because he's been remarking on everything else. But as soon as you've had um, your first major fallout with one of the characters, you're just left to sort of try and find the next place to go in complete pitch black darkness. And I get that obviously the comments are gonna shout out like, well, it's super easy. It's go X direction. I couldn't find that, and I literally spent 20 minutes just walking around in the dark, um, just shining my flashlight, walking around with my dog, Bullet, and um, trying to find, trying to find the game, essentially, just being lost in the woods, and being like, okay, I think some of this is intentional, because they want to put you in the feet of the dude that feels like, you know, he himself is quite lost, but he's trying to, you know, find his own sanity, find his own purpose, and try and find the child, but the sheer reality of how long that went on for, it was like, like I said, 20 minutes, half an hour of literally just plodgingly walking through darkness trying to find the game that I really wanted to check out couldn't do it and even after looking up a couple of YouTube walkthroughs to be like okay where the hell do I go they weren't in the same spot that my dude had like saved in so I was just left in the darkness going like well I want to enjoy you Blair Witch but I just can't find anything and it's just really annoying me so I just turned it off now I might go back to it obviously the response will you know be in the comments going dude you should check that game out um but I just got lost in the woods for too long and just needed to do something else so did put me back on sleeping dogs though which is is always good to be honest always good if we're talking about horror video games that I will never play again there are a lot because I'm a big scaredy cat and I can't really deal with horror themed video games, they stress me out big time. Like, truly, dreadfully stress me out. I get the panic sweats when I play like a multiplayer game like Rainbow Six Siege. I get genuinely anxious, so you can imagine what putting me into a big creepy uh, asylum with only a camcorder that you have to scour for batteries to power will do. And you know, it's not, it's not Outlast that is the horror game that I will never play because there are lots of horror games that I'll never play, but we're talking about a horror game that I literally will never play again. It's PT because you can't download it anymore. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, you and that's so cheeky. You scamp. What a cheeky, what a cheeky thing to put in chatty faces. But it's true. It's the most honest answer anyone can give because no one will ever get to play PT again unless s some shenanigans happen. But yeah, the only chance I got to play that was during my first year of uni when my mate who was um, in my dorm with me and we played it and then literally like a month later it was gone. How long ago, wait, how long was it on the thing for? I can't even remember now, but it was there and then it was gone and he tried selling his PS4. I don't know whether he actually did it in the end. I can't remember. This is such a fascinating story down memory lane, but yeah, it's PT because you can't get it anywhere and it's never getting made, so. PT, the horror themed video game that I will never play again. So, there we go. I know, you're booing. Boo all you want, but that that's the truth. It's the real answer, so, yeah. 
Okay, so apologies if any of you watch the What Culture Gaming podcast because I've been banging on about this game every single chance I can because it's one of my favourite horror games in recent memory and it is Darkwood, this excellent top-down um, psychological thriller survival game thing that I have been completely enraptured by. Like, this game is so scary and so tense and so addictive. Essentially, it works on this day-night cycle where during the day you scavenge for supplies, you try to progress the main quest, but every single night you have to go back to your hideout, barricade the windows, and mount a defense for the things that go bump in the night. And while this is a pretty, you know, standard survival setup, Darkwood does it in such a mysterious way, I guess. You're never as fully prepared as you want to be, and you never can anticipate what's going to attack you or come after you at night time. And if your light goes out, because a huge part of your defense is just the lights that you have around, which are powered by a generator, which are fueled by fuel you can f find around the world, um, if they go out, you're just sort of screwed. So every single day, it's just this constant battle to survive. But that's what makes it so good and so engrossing because you always feel like you've got just enough to inch through and when you've depleted your resources you want to go out and explore and look for whatever creepy shenanigans are going on out there and that's also the reason that I don't want to play it again because for as much as I loved this game it absolutely battered me into the ground it spat on my face and then put its little bum hole over my little nose and for a little while I quite liked it but to do it again, to have another 20 hour experience of this grueling uphill battle in these, you know, completely terrifying Polish woods, I don't think I could do it again because it is totally unforgiving and not something that you're even supposed to enjoy. Everything from just moving around your huge, slow, lumbering dude takes ages to get anywhere. You're always fighting a time restriction. You're always fighting, you know, these beasts that can take way more hits than you can with flimsy bits of wood. And while that makes for an absolutely excellent first run through, it's not something I want to subject myself to again, at least for a long time, especially because it's partly procedurally generated. So every single time you jump in the game, all that knowledge you thought you gained, it's great. It's completely out the window because the map itself will reform and you have to fight this uphill battle again. And for a lot of you crazy people out there, you might, you might love that. You might love that punishment. I don't think I do. I'm a soft little lad. And one time is enough for me. It's a great game. Definitely play it, but probably just play it once. So a horror game that I will never play again. I, uh, there's, te there's technically two, and there's two different reasons as to why. So the first one would be Cry of Fear, and that's just because it was just very disturbing to me. I didn't like the fact that uh, the the main villain in this gar in this game is um, like a child murderer, and the the demons that you have to f fight off are basically these children that he has been murdering, and he's turned into like these demonic children that come after you and they try and stab you. I, I just I didn't like it. Okay, this guy has killed a lot of people, and they were mainly children. And then he tells you about how he's murdered these children, and it was just too much for me. I didn't like that at all. It, it really disturbed me. So Cry of Fear is one that I won't play purely because it disturbed me too much. It did have a, a whole bunch of really good jump scares, which is really good. And it is quite an old game. And I feel like the story is really good. And I feel like I need to get justice on this very evil man. But it just disturbed me too much. It's like the mother of video games uh, for me. I just, it, I didn't like it. And another horror game that I guess I won't play is um, Deadly Premonition because it's just so confusing to me. It's just, it's not really scary and it just didn't make sense. And it was just, I spent the entirety of the game just being so confused to the point where I was too confused to be scared. And um, yeah, I, I had someone basically give it to me and say, this is a really scary horror game. And I think they were joking. I hope they were joking because it is just so bad. Um, maybe it's so bad it's good. I don't know. I didn't get to that part. I feel like if I played it again, I would realize that maybe it's supposed to be like a dark comedy or a, a horror comedy. I'm not sure what it is, but um, yeah. I'm not going to play it again. It made no sense. It wasn't scary. Um, it was just ridiculous. And um, I'm looking for scares in my games. So uh, yeah, those are the two I probably won't be playing again.